The start of the new Premier League season is just a few days away, so I thought it would be interesting to predict which teams are going to finish where. Now obviously it's a very long season, 38 games, one whole year, and it's going to be very difficult to predict where these teams will end up come May. But I'm going to do my best to predict as many teams correctly as possible in this video. Now before we start, I'd just like to recommend that you subscribe to the channel because it's completely free and you can always unsubscribe later. But with that being said, let's get started with my 20th place prediction. 20th, Ipswich. Ips which got themselves promoted to the Premier League by finishing second in the Championship. But a lot of those players who were good in the Championship might find it hard to step up to the Premier League. The Tractor Boys also haven't done enough in the transfer market so far. They are going to need to improve their squad if they want to stay up this season. On paper, they are by far the weakest team. And while they do have a great manager who's got them back-to-back -back promotions, it's going to be really tricky for them to stay up this season. They do still have some good players like Umari Hutchinson, Sam Morsey and Leif Davis, but not enough players with proper Premier League experience. 19th, Leicester. Leicester have had financial trouble and they could even get dot points by the Premier League this season. They've also lost their manager Enzo Maresca to Chelsea and they've replaced him with Steve Cooper who kept Nottingham Forest up in 16th place two seasons ago. I think Cooper is a good manager but Leicester have lost key players like Dewsbury Hall and like Ipswich their squad isn't the strongest. Leicester obviously won the championship last season and they were in the Premier League the year before. They do have a lot of players with experience in the Prem but with all the stuff that's going on around the club like financial stuff and manager change and a fairly weak squad compared to other teams, I'm gonna have to put Leicester 19th. 18th, Nottingham Forest. Nottingham Forest are another team that have had financial trouble recently, and they only just survived last season. Their current manager is Nuno Espirito Santo, who does have experience in keeping teams up. He did it with Wolves a few years ago. They do have some good players like Morgan Gibbs-White and Chris Woods. Murillo has proven a really good centre-back, and Danilo is a great midfielder, but I just don't think Nottingham Forest are gonna have enough to stay up this season. 17th, Southampton. There might be a little bit of bias involved in this, but hear me out. The Saints actually have a decent squad. Carl Walker-Peters and Sugawara are two good fullbacks, and we have depth in that position. Stevens, Manning, Taylor, and Bree can all play in fullback positions. We've also signed Ben Brereton Diaz, who can provide us with some goals and assists up top. I do still think we need a more reliable number nine now that Che Adams is gone. Sekumara and Paul Onuachu are not Premier League level strikers. I'm also worried about parts of our midfield. Flynn Downs is a great player, but Smallbone and Arena might struggle in the Premier League. We have brought in Adam Lallana for that position, which I think will help, but he's not capable of playing every game in a season. Now, defensively, we do have good players like Harwood Bellis, Bednarek, who's got Premier League experience, and Jack Stevens, who's our captain. However, we were conceding far too often in the Championship. I do think we're going to need to change our playstyle. In the Championship, we were very possession-based. We like to pass the ball around the back, even in our own box, and that kind of strategy is unlikely to work against Premier League sides. We're gonna have to get used to playing without the ball. Even in the championship, we were making some serious errors at the back. Misplaced passes in dangerous areas led to quite a few sloppy goals conceded. We definitely can't afford to play like that in the Premier League. With that being said, I do think our good players like Downs, Walker-Peters and Adam Armstrong, who scored a lot in the championship last season, and a very good manager in Russell Martin, will help us to stay up. I think it'll be a long, hard season though, and I have no doubt that we'll be in a relegation battle. 16th, Brentford. Brentford struggled last season, and I think this season it will be a similar story. They're likely to lose Ivan Tony, but they've already bought a replacement, Igor Tiaga. He did well in the Belgian league for Club Brugge. Brentford also still have some attacking threats in Mbermo and Wissa, but the rest of their squads hasn't really improved. I think Thomas Frank is a great manager and they will have what it takes to stay up, but I don't think Brentford have done enough to get themselves out of the bottom quarter. I actually just found out while editing this video that Brentford have signed Fabio Carvalho from Liverpool. He's going to help to improve their midfield. 15th, Wolves. Wolves have a great manager in Gary O'Neill and he's recently signed a new deal. However, they've not had the best transfer window. Important players like Kilman and Pedro Neto have left the club and I think their squad has got considerably weaker. However, during his time with Bournemouth and at Wolves last season, Gary O'Neill has proven that he can do well with a weak squad. Wolves will be heavily relying on players like Huang Hee Chan to score their goals, but I do think they can comfortably stay up. 14th, Fulham. Fulham always seems to get the job done. This is Marco Silva's third season in the Premier League with Fulham, and so far, he's always been comfortably outside the relegation zone. They have lost Joe Polina to Bayern Munich, Bobby De to Leicester, and Tosin Adrabayo to Chelsea. But apparently, they're trying to sign Anderson from Crystal Palace. I'm not sure why he would accept that move, but still. Even without too many new signings, I think Fulham's squad is decent and they will be alright. 13th, Everton. Everton did very well last season, considering they lost points due to financial irregularity. 
Only Man City, Arsenal and Liverpool conceded fewer goals than Everton last season. Their defence is really strong. However, there's a good chance they'll lose Branthwaite to a team like Man United, and they haven't done too much in the transfer window to improve their squad. One notable signing is Illuman and Dai from Marseille. His best form came for Sheffield United in the Championship a few years ago. Everton have also lost Amadou Onana to Aston Villa, but I do think this team is very well coached. Sean Dyche is very good tactically, and he knows how to get points out of tough games. There is a chance that Everton go back into a relegation fight, but I think they'll be safe in 13th place. 12th. Bournemouth. Bournemouth did very well last season. They started slowly, but Iriola got his team playing some really great football towards the end of the season. Now, they have lost Solanke, who scored 19 goals last season, but they've replaced him with Getafe striker Unal. He was on loan at Bournemouth last season. The Cherries have also made Sinistera's loan move a permanent from Leeds. I think Iriola is a great manager, and his play style is really good for a team like Bournemouth. I expect them to be comfortably mid-table again. 11th, Brighton. Brighton have a new manager called Fabian Herzler. He's only 31 years old and managed St. Pauli last he season. He got them promoted to the Bundesliga by finishing top of the German second division. He is a bit inexperienced, that was his first full year as a professional manager, but he did do very well with St. Pauli. And this Brighton squad is a very exciting one. Mitoma and Evan Ferguson, for example, are very talented players. Brighton qualified for Europe just a couple of seasons ago, and they'll be looking to get back into the European places this year. Now, the Zerbi side started last season playing some really great football, but they struggled for form towards the end. Hosler is going to need to turn this club around and get them going in the right direction again. This season, I think there are a few other teams that are more likely to get into the European places than Brighton. 10th, Crystal Palace. Palace were really good at the end of last season. Since Oliver Glasner took over in February, he's transformed the Eagles into a very entertaining team. Now, they have lost Michael Elise to Bayern Munich, but they've signed Daichi Kamada as a replacement. I don't think he's quite as good as Elise, and he doesn't have that connection with Ezra and Mateta yet, but he's still a decent player. I think Palace will continue their good form at the start of this season, but I'm not sure if they can sustain it for 38 games. Still, the future looks bright for Crystal Palace under Glasner, and I think they'll do quite Quite well this season. Ninth, Newcastle. Now, ninth might seem low for a team that qualified for the Champions League just two years ago. Many people blame last season on injury problems, so you might expect Newcastle to bounce back and compete for top four again. However, I don't think they've done enough to improve their scores, and if they have injuries again, they could go to an even lower finish. The competition around them has improved. Man United have improved. Spurs have improved. Aston Villa and West Ham have dramatically improved. But Newcastle haven't really done too much in the transfer markets, and if they lose Anthony Gordon, I think it'll be difficult for them to qualify for Europe. I don't think Newcastle are a bad team, but all the other teams around them have got a lot better, while Newcastle haven't improved much on a team that finished 7th last season. 8th, West Ham. West Ham have done some great transfer business this summer. They've brought in Fulkrug from Borussia Dortmund, Tobedo from Nice, Kilman from Wolves, and Somerville from Beats. Aaron Wambasaka has also come from Man United, and new manager Julen Lopetegui will be looking to guide this team to a top 7 finish. I think West Ham fans should be really optimistic about this season because their transfers have been really good. They already had some really good players like Bowen and Kudus and Warprouse, so there's a lot to be excited about. I think they'll just miss out on Europe this season, but I wouldn't be surprised if they compete for Europa League or even Champions League. Seventh, Chelsea. Chelsea have had another crazy transfer window. They've brought in loads of new players, most notably Pedro Neto from Wolves. Obviously, they've got a new manager this season, Enzo Maresca. He takes over from Pochettino, who I thought was doing quite well. The players are now going to have to adjust to a new playstyle and basically restart the process of becoming an organised and competitive team. I think it'll take a while for Chelsea to really get going this season, just because of all the change that's happening around the club. They do have some fantastic players like Cole Palmer, Moise Caicedo, Kunku's probably going to be back from injury, but despite their talented squads, I think like the last two seasons, Chelsea are going to struggle to find consistent form. 6th, Aston Villa. Villa did very well last season in qualifying for the Champions League. And while they might be distracted by European competitions this season, I still think they'll do well. Unai Emery is a fantastic manager, and despite losing Douglas Luiz to Juventus and Moussa Diaby to Al Ittihad, I still think Villa have had a good transfer window. They signed Amadou Onana from Everton, he's a really good player, and they've brought in Ian Matson from Chelsea. I think that because of how well managed they are, Villa will find a way to stay in Europe next season. I think they'll be happy with the 6th place finish. 
Fifth, Manchester United. Man United didn't do very well last season. They had a lot of injury problems and ended up finishing eighth. They did win the FA Cup though, and this season they've made a lot of transfers that will help them improve their squad depth. They've signed Lenny Yoro from Lille, Joshua Xerxy from Bologna, Matthias De Ligt from Bayern Munich, Masraoui also from Bayern Munich, and Jadon Sancho has returned to the club after his loan spell at Borussia Dortmund. There are still problems with Man United's squad, but I think Ten Hag is a good manager, and they'll have a decent season. Four. Spurs. I think Spurs are going in the right direction at the moment. Ange Postacoglu came in last season to a team that had just lost Harry Kane and finished 8th the previous year. They finished 5th last season and play a very entertaining, attacking brand of football. Dominic Solanke is their big new signing. He scored 19 goals for Bournemouth last season. I think this is a good deal for Spurs, they need to do number 9, and Solanke is Premier League proven. They will need to improve their leaky defence if they want to do better this season, but they do have good players in those positions. Van der Ven, Romero, Dragusin, Pedro Porro. They do have good defenders. I think Ange just hasn't got the defensive side of his tactics sorted out yet. But if Tottenham improve that side of their game this season, then they can definitely get Champions League football. That's why I've predicted them to finish in fourth place. Third, Liverpool. I'm not really sure what to expect from Liverpool under Arne Slot. They haven't made any big signings yet, but they do have a decent squad of players already. My worry is that if Klopp couldn't win the league with them, I don't think Arne Slot can. The Dutch manager did well at Fenerbahce, but the Liverpool players are going to have to adjust to his play style, and I think this season is going to be more about getting top four than competing for the title. I also think Slot might be able to get the best out of Cody Kjakpa, who wasn't really thriving under Klopp, but we've seen his goal-scoring form for the Netherlands. Anyway, I'm predicting another third-place finish for Liverpool. I think they'd be happy with that. Second, Arsenal. You're probably not surprised by this prediction. Arsenal have been challenging City for the last two seasons, finishing second in both and taking City to the final day last season. However, Man City are just that step ahead. I don't think Mikel Arteta is as good of a manager as Pep Guardiola, and at the moment, Man City have better players. Rodri is better than Rice, De Bruyne is better than Odegaard, Foden is better than Trossard. The only Arsenal pairs who would make Man City's 11 are Saka, Saliba and maybe Raya. If Arsenal sign Ossie this title race could be very interesting. But at the moment, Man City have Haaland who is a far better striker than Havertz. I do think Arsenal's defence is very good though. They've signed Calafiori who can play left back, which makes an already solid defence even stronger. Unfortunately though, I don't think Arsenal are going to win the league this season. It'll be close, but it's very difficult to predict predict anyone other than Man City to win the Premier League. They've won 5 out of the last 6, and with the players and manager that they have, it seems like the only thing that can stop them is a points deduction from the Premier League. I don't think that'll happen this season, but maybe next year. It's likely that Pep will be gone by then, so next year's title race will be very interesting. This year though, I think Man City will win. And those are my predictions. Thanks for watching, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, because it's completely free and the worst case scenario is that you unsubscribe later, and trust me, you won't want to do that. Anyway, with that being said, thanks again for watching and I will see you later. I don't know why you're still here. The video is about to end, so bye.